So, well, good evening and welcome to the Brian Crombie Radio Hour on Saga 960. You know, uh, if you've been listening to my show, you know that alternative energy has been one of my passions and something that we've had several different shows on. And I heard about um, a, uh, a program to provide electricity uh, from uh, a waste. And so I wanted to uh, reach out to General Motors, the world's largest automaker, who's not immune at all from disruption. Uh, they've got to innovate or die. And uh, by 2040, General Motors intends to switch 100% of its global operation to renewable energy. And with funding from the Ontario government, GM St. Catharines plant will soon boast the first to complete renewable industrial code generation system solely from landfill gas. Their $28 million undertaking involves the Ontario government and several partners. And today to discuss this, we've got Tammy Drew from General Motors, Gordy Walker from Walker Industries, and Bill Riley from Electra. Welcome, everyone. How are you? Thank you. Thanks. Excellent. So maybe, Tammy, I can start with you. Tell me, what is it that you're up to? <laughs> Great question. So what we actually uh, are undertaking is the construction of a cogeneration plant, which means that um, we take uh, renewable landfill gas, uh, we burn it in uh, four engines to make 6.4 megawatts of electricity for our plant. That's about just over a third of the electricity needs at our plant. And then instead of wasting the heat that's generated in that process, we actually found a way to capture that heat. And then we use that heat to heat our plant through the winter. And as a result, we can reduce our greenhouse gases by 70% at that facility, which is really something pretty extraordinary. When you think about what a lot of provinces, a lot of the countries around the world are trying to do with reducing greenhouse gases, they've set targets out to 2050. And those targets are usually to reduce greenhouse gases by 80% by 2050. We're going to reduce it by almost 70% uh, by, well, this year. We're going to start November 1st. Fantastic. Congratulations. How did this idea all come about? I'd like to say it was my idea, but it wasn't my idea. <laughs> <laughs> I go back, uh, oh my goodness, five, maybe almost six years ago, um, the plant manager at uh, the St. Catharines facility uh, had a conversation with uh, our nearest neighbor, Walker Industry, and uh, they kind of had this idea. They said, you know, could we use the, the waste, or sorry, I shouldn't say it's a waste, it's a, it's a renewable fuel, can we find a way to use the methane that's collected at the landfill and redirect it to our site, which is not too far away, and, and actually use it as fuel? And, uh, you know, I'm happy to say that, you know, uh, these kind of ideas finally came to fruition, and, and here we are now today about ready to start. Fantastic. So, Gordy, maybe I could turn to you. What's uh, Walker Industries' uh, role in this? You obviously have the landfill, and that's where the methane comes from? Yeah, no, I mean, uh, I think really we t look at a at our landfill as a hub for really resource recovery. So at that site, we we take actually uh, leaf and yard waste and food waste from uh, the region of Niagara, turn them into sustainable soils and mulches and turn sewage waste into fertilizers and railway ties into bio coke and on and on. And then really everything that can't be separated gets safely disposed of and, and allows the nature to generate renewable energy really by uh, generating methane gas, which we very effectively uh, collect. Um, and that, that site itself uh, today generates about 15 megawatt equivalent of energy and uh, will peak out in about 10 years time at about uh, somewhere north of 20 megawatts of energy. So that's enough to heat about 32,000 homes. So it generates a very significant amount of energy. So as you can imagine, it's uh, um, uh, the, uh, we, we wanted to find uh, great users for that energy and General Motors was a uh, uh, made a huge amount of sense and so that's why we had approached them. And, um, Excellent. And uh, Bill Wiley, uh, Electra, why are you involved? I would have thought this is competition. You're the one that sells electricity. Isn't this bad news for you? Well, we don't sell electricity so much as uh, transport it to our customers, but uh, we have been involved as if all the electric utilities in the province for a number of years in helping our customers reduce their electricity needs. And we do that by making uh, incentives available through a number of different programs. So when we first heard about this program uh, a few years ago, uh, we were happy to help uh, GM and Walker uh, figure out the viability of this uh, project and help make it a reality. Well, this is a fascinating uh, discussion, uh, making use of garbage in landfill and turning it into uh, something that's going to reduce uh, greenhouse gas. We're going to take a break for some messages and come back uh, in just a minute. Stay with us.
Welcome back to the Brian Crombie Radio Hour, Saga 960. We're talking alternative energy, uh, um, actually making use of garbage, I guess. Uh, and so um, we're talking with, uh, with uh, Gordy Walker from Walker Industries, uh, Bill Wiley from Electra, and uh, Tammy Drew from uh, General Motors St. Catharines, um, who have uh, put together a, uh, a, a way of taking methane from landfill at Walker Industries site, turning it into electricity, powering uh, the plant, and then also getting some of the heat from the, from the process and, uh, and I guess warming uh, the plant. So let's understand exactly how this uh, technology works. Gordy, how does garbage turn into methane? Well, I think uh, when uh, any waste uh, uh, that's organic in nature, the uh, you know bugs are going to uh, are going to eat effectively, and in in a landfill, let's say uh, an, an anaerobic process, which effectively generates methane. So the bugs are generating the methane, and it has about a 60-year curve. So over 60 years, it'll generate um, um, gas, um, and uh, and effectively. At our site, uh, as I had mentioned, uh, we, we generate about 15 megawatt equivalent, uh, which would peak out at about 20 megawatts, which would be enough to heat 32,000 homes. And really landfills are complex engineered structures um, where you really need to be efficient at collecting all the gas. Then we treat it. So we need to remove any moisture that's in the gas and uh, any silica, so any particles, because that's gonna gum up engines at the General Motors side of things. So we, do, we clean and treat it. And then we had to build, obviously, a pipeline um, underneath. Uh, an hold, it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. How do you capture the methane? Um, so similar to an oil and gas well, uh, you would see in the in the in the west, you have to drill, uh, you have to drill down uh, into each uh, each zone, and effectively you're you're vacuuming it, so you're sucking um, the gas out of the landfill. So the bugs generate it, and then you you create a effectively a, uh, a collection infrastructure of, of, of uh, pipes that you basically would then collect it and then you need to um, you need to clean it and then and then push it down the pipeline. And I understand methane is is sort of like natural gas correct? It is natural gas. But uh, yet when it gets uh, vented into the uh, climate I've been told that it is six or seven times more more damaging from a climate change standpoint than uh, regular uh, you know, carbon dioxide, is that correct? It's, uh, methane's actually 20 times uh, as potent as CO2. And so that's one of the reasons why um, these landfills are so well engineered because you wanna capture that methane, number one, because it's a greenhouse gas, you don't want it to escape and it creates odors. And number two, it's a resource. We wanna be able to utilize that um, for, for uses such as what we're doing here. Now, so for people uh, in, uh, in this, uh, uh, broadcast uh, region of uh, Mississauga. They may be familiar with uh, Britannia. Uh, is it Britannia, the uh, golf course? Um, and I understand that's uh, a garbage dump that uh, you're, uh, you've got a methane collection facility on. Is that correct? Yes, we, uh, um, we, we went through a, uh, an, an old the precursor for the FIT programs, the, uh, uh, the Green Energy Act, uh, where we are, created a four and a half megawatt um, um, engine plant uh, to sell electricity into the grid. Uh, and so that we, uh, again, we are uh, collecting uh, gas from the landfill and, uh, and powering, creating power with the use of turbines. Now there's a, a, another big landfill right at the corner of Aaron Mills Parkway in the QEW, and they just flare up the methane. Why, why do they do that? Well, you need uh, the, the amount of infrastructure to collect and to utilize the gas is quite significant. So you need a very large landfill to make it economic. And so the Britannia Road landfill was uh, was larger and has has more gas being generated. The air, the uh, Aaron Mills that's an older landfill, so it's much further down the gas curve. So there's not as much gas being generated. So there wouldn't be enough to make it economic to actually utilize somehow. And and why flare it? Uh, is that better than just venting it? Yeah. So what you're doing is when you flare it, you're taking that methane, which is 20 times as potent as CO2, and you're effectively converting it into CO2. So you're you're getting that whatever 19 times reduction uh, down to down to CO2 level. So that's really what you're trying to do is is uh, a reduce odors and b reduce the the uh, greenhouse gases that are going in and its impact on. Uh, okay, so I interrupted you. Now you've collected this methane, then you had to pipe it to General Motors, correct? Correct. So that, and then what? You build a power uh, plant. You build a power plant right beside General Motors plant. Uh, well, General Motors built the, the power plant beside their plant, yes. 
Okay, and and uh, and so can either uh, um, uh, Tammy or Gordy tell me about this power plant? You know, is it is it just like a natural gas power plant effectively? So, I mean, we, we already had, this facility has been uh, in St. Catharines for, I, I think, over 60 years. So we, we've been on this uh, site for a long time. Uh, we've had a powerhouse um, for a long time. That powerhouse had boilers and had, had all the infrastructure sort of that we, we needed. What we needed, though, to make electricity was uh, some new engines. So we actually bought uh, four engines that total 6.4 megawatts uh, of power. Um, and we had those installed. Um, and then we had to basically um, tie that all together so that we could reuse the waste energy um, in, our, in our heating system so that we could use it to capture at our boilers and then push it out so that we could heat our, our buildings. So we, we were fairly fortunate that we were able to use some existing infrastructure. Uh, we bought some new infrastructure. <laughs> uh, we had to build a pipeline between our site and, uh, and the Walker site. Um, so they are our nearest neighbor, but uh, it's still about three kilometers away that we have to ship that uh, that methane in a pipe to us. Um, and then, you know, we, we went that extra step. So Pogen is not new in the sense that there are lots of industries that do that. What was new was that we were going to use landfill gas. So we made sure that all the engines we purchased could run on 100% landfill gas. And are these dramatically different uh, engines? Um, they're not dramatically different in the sense that they still run just like an engine, um, but you want to make sure that uh, that it's compatible with the gas. So we, it, they are a little bit more expensive because you need to, the seals and all the connections and stuff to, to be able to withstand um, a slightly different chemical makeup from methane versus natural gas. Yeah, the, no, uh, like... the, the landfill gas that comes in is actually not 100% methane, so you're going to have other constituent. When you're using a vacuum, you're going to get some oxygen and nitrogen and other CO2 and things. And so these engines are built to run at uh, not needing 100% methane. They can run at 50% methane. Um, so that, that's that's where they're, they're a little bit different than the normal engines. Okay, and... Um... The, uh, the, the methane that you are then making use of um, produces uh, the electricity. You would have been buying electricity from Electra or from, uh, from, uh, from Ontario Hydro effectively. Um, when you burn it, I presume you're creating carbon dioxide and venting that into, uh, into the atmosphere. So while you're reducing the methane uh, being uh, either flared or, uh, or uh, vented, you are venting CO2, is that correct? Well, yeah, so it's still combustion. So you're right, we, we are still emitting. The, the difference is, is before, um, in addition to buying electricity, we would have also bought natural gas um, to, heat the, to heat our boilers and provide heat for the facility. We don't have to do that now. So basically we displaced all of that natural gas that we used to buy um, and we're using the waste heat from this. So it's kind of a win-win for the environment. So Instead both Electra the and Enersource are upset with you. <laughs> <laughs> I can assure you we're very happy uh, with, uh, with this project and, I, and I'll just point out one of the things that makes this project viable and qualify for incentives from, from Electra is the use of the waste heat. That's very important for these projects. So this is a good way to take a, a resource that is truly being wasted and turn to something very, very productive. Excellent. And, and so do you have to provide backup uh, electricity anyway? So, uh, you know, unlike solar and wind that uh, comes and goes, I presume this methane gas just uh, keeps on coming. There's no uh, disruption in its supply. Correct. It's uh, the, uh, and in fact, the, um, the usage of the methane is about, would be about a quarter of our supply. So we have, uh, we, we you try to build as much redundancy in there as is possible. Um, and then the other, the secondary uh, kind of redundancy is the fact that these engines can run on natural, they're dual fuel, so they can run on natural gas as well. So if there was ever a severe interruption or of some sort that they could run on natural gas to provide continuity for, for General Motors. So I, I presume, are you still hooked up to Electra? And, uh, and so if you need a backup, you can get the electricity from them? Yeah, I mean, this project only supplies about 35% of the electricity. Uh, St. Catharines uh, Propulsion Plant is a, is a big facility. <laughs> oh, only 35%. So you still got, and, and just out of interest, how do, you, how do you like mix the electricity, the electricity from the power plant and the electricity from uh, Electra? 
Oh, now you're getting beyond me. <laughs> Bill, you got any suggestions? <laughs> Well, I'm not an engineer, but I don't think you're really mixing it per se. I think you're just choosing which part of the plant to operate off uh, off this new generation system. And I'll just add, I mean, these are engines like your car engine. They need maintenance from time to time. Uh, General Motors will typically schedule any maintenance required during their regular shutdowns. But if they have to take them down at some point, they'll still get the electricity that they need from us to continue their operation. Okay, fantastic. So um, how does the heat get captured and uh, like, do you just have like a blower that blows it into the, to the plant? Like how does it, how do you capture the heat and make use of it? Well, a lot of engineering goes into that as well. So um, as I said, we have two large industrial boilers um, and then we have some heat exchangers that we also had to purchase that basically allows us to capture this waste heat, heat through the heat exchangers, the heat up, but the, the uh, water in the, in the boilers, and then that is actually then distributed through pipes that go through literally kilometers and kilometers of our, of our plant to heat it. And, and this, as I said, this will produ produce the, the heating needs for this plant for um, more than 70% of the plant. So we have a few what we call outbuildings that uh, just based on our current infrastructure, we aren't able to reach. Um, but you know, that's maybe, a, that's maybe something for us to consider as we go forward is, you know, how do we reach those final outbuildings so that we can actually reduce our greenhouse gas uh, uh, emissions even further? So it's sort of like the old radiators. It's all hot water. Yep. Oh, really? Okay. Bill, tell us about Electra's uh, role in this and something that I understand you've got called Save on Energy. Yeah, well, the, the, this particular project was uh, eligible for incentives under the Save on Energy programs, which are, are funded from, uh, from uh, the province, from the independent electricity system operator. So our role at the beginning was to help uh, General Motors uh, ensure that this was a viable project, that the technology that they were using is proving, that the engineering calculations about uh, the production and the, uh, the use of the waste heat uh, all made sense. And uh, that was all very successful. There was an engineering study done that was completed and met all the criteria to, to show that this was a viable project. And then General Motors decided that uh, uh, they could proceed with a, with a business case and put in an application for the actual incentives. And we helped manage that process as well and make sure that they qualify. I understand, uh, Gordy, that, um, or, or uh, any one of you, if you want, that this had to actually go underneath the Welland Canal uh, yes, no, it, uh, it um, had to go underneath, uh, it actually, one of the old, uh, the non-active third canal, so it's not the physical uh, Welland Canal, because that's on the other side of General Motors from ourselves, but it did involve uh, about 400, just under 500 meters of horizontal directional drilling, where you had to go 40 feet below the old canal, hit the face of the escarpment underground, and then still be able to exit within two meters of the uh, planned exit of the bore, so it is uh, quite a, uh, from a uh, technical and again that's over my head but it is very technical and it, we managed to uh, hit the spot so it's um, it, it but we again we've uh, I think all of us have been really trying to work with best of breed partners on this project in order to make it really work well and I think it's been we're, we're very excited to have it uh, kind of in motion now. So when Tammy said your neighbor, she was being generous with the uh, description. Uh, the well, there's only one property. Uh, there's the the Seaway Authority is the only uh, uh, person between the two of us. So we are a pretty deep canal. You got to get under to get uh, the the gas <laughs> across or under or whatever. Well, that's fantastic. That's uh, that's uh, you know incredible that uh, you're able to make use of this methane. And Gordy, what would you have been doing with the methane if you weren't capturing it? Would you be just venting it? Uh, well, we've, we've, we do a number of things we're already. We have, uh, we do actually generate some electricity at our site under an old program as well. And uh, we are actually, um, it's one of those stay tuned things, but we are going to be announcing something in the coming um, uh, weeks and months uh, that would be uh, uh, double the size of this in terms of the amount of gas on the renewable natural gas front. Um, more in the uh, uh, gas injection into the gas pipeline side of things, but uh, so we are, we are constantly looking for uses of that gas because it's such a great uh, renewable resource and it's consistent. Um, so uh, certainly we're always looking for it. And technology had to catch up a little bit on the renewable natural gas. And so we've been waiting for it. And mean, meanwhile, uh, this project has uh, been able to get to, uh, to fruition. 
We're chatting today about uh, alternative energy, making use of methane from uh, landfill sites and, uh, and fueling a GM plant in St. Catharines. Uh, we're going to take a break for some messages and come right back with uh, this group of uh, pretty intelligent people in just a minute. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Brian Crombie Radio Hour on Saga 960. Uh, fascinating conversation about alternative energy. And uh, I, uh, I am convinced that we need to, uh, to have people like uh, we've uh, got on tonight's show that think about uh, uh, small and big solutions uh, to our, our climate change issues if we're ever gonna solve our problems. Uh, we've got uh, Tammy Drew uh, from General Motors, uh, uh, the General Motors plant in St. Catharines. We've got Gordy Walker uh, from Walker Industries in St. Catharines. We've got Bill Waddy from Electra. Bill, where are you from? Are you from St. Catharines or are you from Mississauga here? Uh, I've worked in many of those uh, 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 communities. Actually, uh, I was born in Hamilton but, uh, and have spent some time there in my working career as well. Okay. Um, so, you know, maybe I could broaden the conversation uh, a little bit and, uh, and, and ask you, uh, uh, Tammy, what else do you think General Motors uh, uh, should be doing or uh, are, are doing? Like, are, are there numerous other plants that are doing cogeneration kind of uh, facilities with landfill or, or other things uh, to get this uh, reduction, this massive reduction in climate change uh, impact that you're planning on having? So General Motors, uh, you know, I would say that we don't think that there's a silver bullet, just like probably for people's homes or for, you know, the community at large. I don't think uh, everything is going to be necessarily landfill gas, but this was the third project General Motors has done across North America. Uh, we had a plant in, uh, in Indiana and, a, and another plant in Michigan that have also um, done similar things. Um, you know, we would like to, this is a technology that we really like. We like the fact that it, uh, um, is similar to natural gas, that we're familiar with that kind of things. We're familiar with the maintenance of it and, and we can uh, learn from it. But uh, there are some limits. You need to be close to a landfill. <laughs> uh, we're very fortunate that we were only three kilometers away from, from our nearest neighbor. Um, we did have to go underneath a, a canal, but uh, relatively speaking, it was, it was close. When you start getting out, you know, more than maybe 10 kilometers from the landfill, these things become a little bit more difficult and, and, and you're probably looking maybe for other solutions. So I know General Motors, we've looked at uh, and we've implemented solar um, at some of our facilities, obviously uh, in, in usually sub, uh, sunnier climes, <laughs> California and places like that. Um, we certainly- You're saying St. Great... Catharines isn't sunny? <laughs> I that, you know, just a factor of, of how many sun hours we have on a, on a regular basis that uh, we probably need a little bit more sunshine. Okay. Um, we also look at wind. Uh, you know, sometimes the wind is not directly at our next to our facilities, but we're able to have these uh, power purchase agreements where we agree to purchase a certain amount of equivalent um, wind generated electricity. So we've got a number of projects like that. Um, and then obviously conservation. Uh, you know, we have a long history of working with Electra, working with other utilities in, in the communities in which we have uh, um, plants with everything from lighting retrofits, um, you know, you name it. If it if it's uh, penthouse improvements, um, boiler conversions, uh, you know, part of the solution is going to be conservation. Sorry, penthouse improvements? Are you uh, trying to improve the top <laughs> of uh, condominium no, buildings? No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> that's what we call <laughs> um, at our facilities the the areas on the top of our buildings that kind of house. The, uh, the equipment for air exchange in the facilities, penthouses, but yeah, no, not, not the luxury condos. <laughs> I didn't realize those were called penthouses. Bill Riley from Electra, um, just take a step back. Electra, you've, uh, it's a new company, you're a merger of several different uh, companies. Uh, can you uh, remind us uh, what happened? Yeah, so uh, Electra was formed, uh, what, three years ago, I believe, with uh, Horizon and Enersource and uh, PowerStream up in York Region and Hydro One Brampton. And uh, more recently, we bought Guelph Hydro into the fold. So we're the, uh, the largest municipally owned uh, uh, electric utility in Canada. And I think the second largest in North America, if I remember correctly. We serve a, a, a little over a million customers, if I remember the, the, the number correctly. So we've got a very, very big footprint. And we very much want to continue to help all of our customers of all sizes, from residential to small business to, to a large commercial to plants the size of General Motors. And what else are you doing from a climate change impact? Are you doing cogeneration facilities like we're talking about at GM St. Catharines and other places? 
we, we have looked at supporting other cogeneration uh, uh, projects, sometimes just through incentives and sometimes in other means. Uh, we have some solar facilities that we operate uh, that, that come from the legacy utilities. Uh, and in Guelph, we've set up an innovation center. We call it the Great Center. Uh, so that's a, a bit of a hub for looking at new and emerging uh, uh, technologies and opportunities uh, to, uh, to uh, both save electricity and uh, help the climate. And uh, Gordy, you're in the landfill business, is that correct? Uh, well, we're, a, we're actually a fifth generation uh, family business that was started in 1887. And, and so we're a little more diversified than just that. We have, um, we are in the aggregates and construction. Environmental business is our largest business. And we also have uh, emulsions for building materials. In the, in the environmental business, really we've, uh, I mean, our, our vision is building a sustainable future together. And we do that in a couple ways. So we are the, uh, a lot, we do a lot of stuff that's in the background. So we are the largest organic waste um, um, re kind of resource recovery business in Canada. We, we recover about a million tons of, when I say organic waste, it's really anything in the waste stream that has carbon in it. Um, and so we do things like uh, your leaf and yard waste and food waste. If you see in, um, in really almost anywhere in the GTA, uh, we turn those into sustainable soils and mulch. And that's really taking carbon and putting it back into the ground. And we're taking forest residuals from, um, from the um, sawmills, so all the bark that doesn't have any en energy value, and we're actually taking that and blending it with compost into, again, sustainable soils and mulch. We take grease trap waste from commercial kitchens, you know, restaurants, and we and we're, uh, turn that into a fuel for anaerobic digesters. Um, and we do a, a, a whole raft of other, they take biosolids from uh, sewage waste and we're turning that into fertilizers. Um, and then really anything you can't se separate that still is too hard to separate, it goes into a landfill. And again, by having a well-engineered landfill um, and a good collection system, we can uh, maximize that resource and reuse that that resource in terms of using that methane for um, in, in terms of turning that landfill into a uh, an energy hub if you will and then that's really what we're doing here with General Motors and and uh, looking to do in the renewable natural gas front. I've heard about anaerobic digestion um, a bunch of times in regards to the, the potential to use it at farms or at meatpacking plants or uh, uh, sewage uh, treatment plants. Are we doing everything that we should be doing in that regard? Um, well, I think we are in the farm. Uh, we've done quite a lot on the farm side. Um, uh, municipal anaerobic digesters are the big ones. Um, today, they don't really generate much in way. They're in the gas... Um, uh, minimization business, i.e. they don't want odors because they're in the city. Uh, but if they actually uh, decided to, they would have the infrastructure to generate lots of gas and be able to, again, make generate renewable natural gas. Uh, there just aren't really any uh, municipalities. Hamilton's really the only one that's done much with their with it um, uh, in terms of turning some into electricity, but we've uh, there aren't too many um, municipal sites that have really uh, gotten on in the game, if you will, in terms of re creating renewable energy out of, uh, out, of, uh, out of gas. Why not? Well, I think it's, uh, you know, uh, the materials you need to bring in would be different. Um, and, you know, they need to have kind of four nines uptime. You know, you can't have a wastewater treatment plant go down. And so I think they're hesitant. The engineers, I guess, would be probably hesitant to, um, you know, uh, introduce a whole bunch of um, kind of variation in terms of what comes in because um, you know uh, food waste is not uh, and, and the amount of gas that's generated really depends on the material and we know that because we're in the grease trap business and every time we go to a different place it's going to have be different types of materials that'll and the bugs will react differently to each of them um, and so uh, that's really a, of concern uh, when you want a nice continuous system that's running all the time um, and so certainly um, there's, there's potential there, but it, it hasn't been tapped into at this point in time yet. I uh, did an interview with a professor of engineering from McMaster University, uh, and she was saying that uh, Lake Erie has been killed uh, by uh, sewage treatment plants uh, flowing into Lake Erie, and she uh, predicted that was going to happen in Lake Ontario, and she described uh, the size of the tourism business, the fishing business, uh, the yachting business, uh, and just uh, you know, how many people enjoyed for Parks and Recreation. Um, Lake Ontario and said that, uh, um, you know, here we've got this incredible resource in garbage and sewage that we could be producing something with, 
and instead we're pumping it into the lake and polluting our lakes and killing them. Well, and it's a lot of it's going into the uh, in, uh, being land applied. Um, I mean, right now we're taking uh, city, some of City of Toronto's biosolids and Niagara biosolids, and we're effectively using a byproduct out of the cement kiln industry. So it's the dust that comes out. We're using cement kiln lime dust. Effectively, we're using uh, pH to kill the pathogens rather than heat. So much more efficient. Um, and then effectively, you end up with a nice granular fertilizer out the back end that we're selling to farm co-ops across Ontario. And that's, we have a facility in Niagara and one in Halifax, another in Sudbury, and one, in, believe it or not, in Banff, in the park. It's taking city of Banff's biosolids and turning it into, into uh, fertilizers. Tammy, I spoke with another uh, um, General, Motor, General Motors plant uh, that was uh, doing a big uh, battery uh, uh, um, system where they were... Uh, um, storing uh, electricity during uh, the off-peak uh, periods and then uh, making use of it during uh, the, uh, the peak periods and was reducing their uh, electrical bill and, and peak electrical usage, which is a challenge for the electrical companies, uh, fairly dramatically. Uh, you've told, uh, told us your story. Do you think that the typical GM plant manager or Ford plant manager or whoever plant manager are really thinking about these climate change uh, issues and opportunities and applying them? Well, I mean, I think uh, I think the short answer to that is yes. Uh, you know, Ontario, uh, unfortunately, uh, has um, some fairly high electricity rates, uh, at least uh, compared to um, our competing automotive U.S. jurisdictions. And so if you're not looking at it from a climate perspective, you're probably looking at it from an operations cost perspective. Um, I think, you know, uh, a lot of them have uh, sustainability goals. Um, General Motors has been really adamant that, uh, you know, if we're going to look at solutions to um, reducing our electricity, reducing our, you know, usage of any kind of energy, they were going to try to look at it from a sustainability point of view and look at those opportunities to um, not just cut costs, but can we create that win-win-win? Can we have a win for the environment, a win for the bottom line, and a win for the community? So. You know, it was kind of nice that, uh, well, it's more than nice, that we were able to find this project for St. Catharines that, uh, that really was, was, um, was got everybody excited, so. Gosh, I think you actually just made a really good argument in favor of carbon taxes, that we're doing this to <laughs> reduce costs, fantastic. So high electrical prices are giving General Motors and other companies the incentive to do what's right for the, uh, for the environment. Yeah, I mean, if I can say, you know, I, I would say General Motors is not adverse to the concept of, of a carbon tax. What, what we'd like to see, though, is that if you're going to take money for that purpose, we'd like to see it recycled back to those same kind of industries, those same companies, to kind of help drive these kind of these kind of projects, right? Um, a lot of these projects are capital intensive. You know, this project was just $28 million just from the General Motors side. I'm sure uh, Jordy probably has numbers about how much, you know, investment was required on his side. Um, sometimes these projects are hard to get off the, the drawing room floor without some kind of a set incentive. And we're really happy that we were able to partner with, with folks like, like Electra. But some of their funding actually comes from the government through, you know, the previous cap and trade program or through carbon pricing or federal programs. Um, and, you know, we'd like to see that if you're going to collect the money from us, um, help us help ourselves reduce operating costs help achieve the environmental objective, which is reduce greenhouse gases. And, you know, you probably won't see a lot of us complain too much about it. We're chatting about alternative energy tonight with uh, Tammy Drew from General Motors uh, St. Catharines, Gordy Walker from Walker Industries, and Bill Riley from Electra. We're going to take a break for some messages and come back with some concluding comments in just a minute. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Brian Crombie Radio Hour Saga 960. We're talking about alternative energy tonight with uh, Tammy Drew uh, of uh, General Motors uh, St. Catharines, um, who did all the permitting, and I can imagine with this uh, three kilometer long pipeline uh, going down underneath a, a tunnel, uh, uh, one of the old well and tunnels, I thought it was the current well and tunnel, and back up and uh, through some escarpment and stuff like that. I can imagine, Tammy, you had a lot of fun with that permitting process. Uh, permitting is is can be fun. <laughs> uh, you know the, the interesting thing about this project was, uh, you know, we had to go through the same permitting at our site um, 
as as a as a solar farm or as a as a wind farm. We had to get a renewable energy approval, uh, even though it was going in our existing footprint of our facility. We had to do public consultations. We had to go out to the community. We had to post things in the in the newspaper. Uh, so we had to do a whole bunch of fun things to to get. What was the <laughs> toughest question you got from the public community uh, meetings? Um. I, you know, actually, we had nothing but support on this one, you know, and I've done a lot of projects through the years and, and people have asked, you know, all kinds of questions, but uh, people really were generally interested in how the technology worked, um, if we were going to do it in other places. Um, and the most common question I got was, uh, you know, are we hiring? <laughs> I could well imagine. And uh, we've got uh, Gordy Walker of uh, Walker Industries, who, uh, who is, is it, did you actually tell me it was five generation family business? Yes, we started in 1887 by my great, great grandfather. Fantastic. And what was he doing in 1887? He wasn't doing landfill. No, he was a Scottish stone cutter. And so we started our legacy business was in aggregates. And then uh, we, uh, in the uh, late 60s, early 70s, we kind of moved into the environmental business in a, in a meaningful way. Excellent. And we've got Bill Riley from uh, Electro Utilities. And, uh, and Bill, um, you know, I've had a couple of different interviews with people. Um, I mentioned earlier this, uh, this other plant manager uh, that is uh, um, buying power at one time of the day and selling power back at another time of the day. I've had other people that have got um, a conversion of diesel uh, power plants at plants that uh, they then want to uh, uh, use with uh, you know other kinds of uh, of biomaterials and sell uh, power to uh, to uh, to the power utilities, and then I had someone else on who said that all these electrical cars that we're going to have in the future um, can uh, can store power and then sell power back, and that the whole energy distribution business is going to change from being a source of energy selling it to people to being going back and forth, that, that the users are going to be producers and supply it on the grid, and then it's going to go back and forth. Is that going to jumble up your business dramatically in the future? Well, certainly we're going to say some, see some changes in, in of, of that nature as we go forward. And again, I'm not an expert quite in that area of it, but I've, I've uh, certainly been uh, hearing a lot of things about it within the organization. And, and yes, I mean, it's quite possible that people will be generating a little bit of power uh, uh, at, at their homes at some point and store them in battery packs or store them in other ways and uh, and effectively will either not consume it when they do need it because it, it's right there for them or possibly sell it back into the grid. I had Elizabeth May, a former leader of the Green Party on, and she said that we're going to have a huge fiscal stimulus uh, to get us out of this uh, um, pandemic recession, uh, but that it's all going to be green. And there's going to be a ton of incentives for people to do some of the stuff that we've been talking about. Do you think there's going to be a huge amount of government incentives to go green? Well, I, I, I understand that, that all governments, uh, federal, provincial, and so on, are, are, are looking at that. So it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, let's face it, in the pandemic, there's, there's a lot of need and there's going to be a lot of money spent. And I don't envy the, the, the politicians and the bureaucrats behind them that are figuring out what's the best way to, to spend money at this time. But we've already seen great strides in, in electric vehicles. I know of some, uh, some uh, electric bus projects that, that are being looked at within our service territory. Uh, I have driven the uh, the Chevy uh, the Chevy Volt. That's the right name for it, I believe, Tammy. The all electric uh, vehicle. It's a fantastic car. I can hardly wait to buy one myself. Well, um, I got to say, I think that um, I'm encouraged by uh, Tammy what uh, General Motors and St. Catharines is doing, and thank you uh, for uh, um, what what you have done in getting the permitting done. Um, and, uh, you know, I've, I've talked to a bunch of different uh, um, manufacturing people and uh, some of them, if uh, Gordy Walker came uh, making his proposal, they would kick him out and not be listening to wind or solo or uh, anaerobic digesters or methane three kilometers down underneath the Welland Canal, etc. And so I think uh, General Motors and yourself uh, should be congratulated for undertaking this and uh, reducing your, your climate change uh, footprint. So thank you very much for that. And Gordy, let's turn more garbage into good stuff, okay? Thanks. Absolutely. That's our show for tonight on Alternative Energy. Uh, Tammy Drew, General Motors, uh, St. Catharines, Gordy Walker from Walker Industries in St. Catharines, and Bill Riley from Electra, who have turned a whole bunch of garbage and landfill into uh, methane slash natural gas, 
shipped it over to General Motors and uh, reduced their uh, electrical uh, purchases and also reduced their natural gas purchases to both power their plant and to, uh, to heat their plant. Sounds good to me. That's our show for tonight. You can get me every Monday through Friday at 6 o'clock on 960 AM or www.saga960am.ca or all my podcasts and videocasts are online at briancrombie.com. Thanks for joining me. Good night, everybody.